All right. Now let's look at the sort of extreme case where we have no mixing, right? So this is the opposite case of solubility, right? And so this happens in what we would term as non-ideal solutions. So instead of uh, mixing on the atomic level, we just have physical mixing, which is what we're talking about here. And so um, what I put up here is a Gibbs free energy plot versus composition. So imagine we have two things and we can plot the Gibbs free energy of uh, putting those two things together. So this non-ideal solution um, can happen uh, in this, uh, um, this physical mixing instead of uh, atomic uh, happens when there is a uh, positive enthalpy of mixing. So if I try to add two things together, it takes additional energy to, to mix. So that's when these things can happen. And so I put up a couple cases here. So these are all Gibbs free energy curves for um, various types of solutions. So the middle one here is the Gibbs free energy for an ideal solution. And so if you go from one end to the next, there's a minimum uh, in that. And so this would mean that it is favorable at all points um, to form a solution. Um, you can also have the case where you have a negative um, enthalpy of mixing, and so that pushes it even further down. Um, and so this is a, a regular solution, uh, but it acts the same way. So there's still, um, you still form a solution. Where this can happen is a, a, the non-ideal case where the enthalpy is positive. So uh, for example, the case here that you can see up here. So it's positive when you mix them together. And so when you add that along with the entropy together, the Gibbs free energy is such that you develop uh, an inflection. And so you see basically that manifest itself here when this uh, enthalpy is positive, right? And so we're going to see how that actually gives us this uh, non-ideal case uh, here in a second. All right, so let's look an at an example where we have that inflection point. So we're just gonna isolate one curve here. So uh, again, starts from uh, the one composition, goes to the, the complete other composition of just B over here. But we have this inflection develop in the middle where we have a local maximum here, local minimums here and here. And so what we have to do and what uh, maybe you've done in a class like thermodynamics is to look at phases in equilibrium, we have to look at a common tangent, right? So to determine what is an equilibrium here in the middle, um, we have to look at the common tangent. And so what we look at, so if we draw um, a line from this minimum and from this minimum, the tangent of those points, we see that, that is co they're common. Right? So we have one line that goes across that. And so if you base, what this is saying is that if I have a, a liquid or a solid with this composition, Xb uh, prime, and I have another solution with the composition Xb double prime, and I mix those two together, then it's gonna fall, the Gibbs free energy is gonna follow along this dashed line. Whereas if I try to have one solution, so uh, imagine I have uh, composition Xb prime and Xb double prime. Uh, if I mix those two equally, so half and half, you uh, would have a composition here, right? So the Gibbs free energy would be right here at this red, where the red arrow is pointing to. If I have one solution with that composition, so X, it would be up here, right? So the Gibbs free energy of the mixture is lower than the Gibbs free energy of the single solution. So that's why these inflection points tell us that we're gonna have phase separation because the Gibbs free energy is lower if those two phases are separate as opposed to trying to form one solution. All right, so let's use that. Uh, that, that let's use that knowledge that we just uh, looked at for the inflection points and I've given you a series of Gibbs free energy curves for different temperatures. So in this case, T1 is the highest temperature, then T2 lower, T3 lower than that. 
So see if you can sketch what the resulting phase diagram would look like for this material uh, using these inflection points and using what we just talked about with the common tangent technique. So take a minute, see if you can sketch that out, and we'll come back here uh, in a second and talk about that. All right, so looking at that curve again, so I've got this on the, the next slide here. Again, uh, T1, D2, T3 d in decreasing fashion. If we try to plot that, we'll see that right at T1 is where the inflection point is sort of starting to develop. So it just kind of flattens out, right? So we still have one phase at that point. But lower than that, at temperatures lower than T1, we see that there's separation because we have an inflection point. And the borders of where we have that mixing are gonna be where we have that common tangent. So for T2, if we draw a common tangent, we see that this point and this point are where we would have compositions uh, that mix together. And, uh, and so we could draw those. So if we go over to T2, we see that this point and this point are uh, the same as this and this on the composition plot. So uh, if we, so what's that, what that says is if I'm, if I have a composition in the middle of that, I will have a sep uh, mixture of those two compositions. I'll have one composition, uh, liquid or solid, uh, that is this composition. And I'll have another composition that's over here, and I'll just have physical mixtures of those two different solutions. So this is very common in, um, in these types of mixing reactions, but what happens is the lower and lower temperatures we go, the more sort of demixing there is. So the, uh, the less uh, alike they are. And so what we see is that at T3, those compositions have spread out even further. So we're at an even further point over here and over here. And so T3 is even farther to the left in composition over here and farther to the right over here. And so what we see if we kept pl uh, plotting all of those different Gibbs free energy curves is we would see this dome in, uh, in this reaction. So uh, on this side, there's one phase. On this side, there would be one phase. But if you're somewhere in the middle here, you would have a mixture of the two phases to the left and right. So that's what this shows us that we have. And this is a very common trend with temperature to see that the demixing increases with decreasing temperature. So uh, a couple of notes about uh, nomenclature here. So right where that inflection develops, so in this case it would be T1, so right where that um, gap here, this dome, develops, that's known as the consulate temperature. And this is where, again, where the inflection first developed. So that's just sort of a uh, thing to keep in mind when we're looking um, at that.